CM Sportsnet is made possible by Genovas to Go and by Carol Links. Hi there, I'm Pat Stetzer, and welcome to another episode of Game On, where we've got you covered on all things Carroll County High School sports. Winners Mill football made program history in week four, and we saw a pair of girls' soccer rivals take to the pitch. We'll show you the highlights and some Carroll Lynx updates, and we'll check in with McDaniel College's football team, and we'll unveil the latest athlete of the week. All right, let's go. It's Game On. <laughs> Westminster hosts Manchester Valley as the Owls welcome homecoming 2023. And CM Sportsnet will have the Mavericks Owls game for you on Friday, September 29th as our football game of the week. Westminster can improve to 4 and 1 with a win, and the Mavericks have beaten the Owls just once on the field in their all time series. That was back in 2014. Join me and Ken Johnson with our pregame show that starts at 6 45, followed by kickoff at 7 for Ruby Field at Westminster High School. We're going to take a look at football results from week four, and let's start with the CM Sportsnet game of the week from last Friday when Winners Mill hosted Century. Winters Mill hosted Century on Friday, September 22nd in a Carroll County Athletic League football clash. And the Falcons were on the precipice of program history as they looked for their first ever 4-0 start. The Knights came into this one going after their first win of the season in their Carroll County opener. And it's Winters Mill with the game's first big play. Camden Cook picks off this pass from Ray Poulton and takes it to the house for a 51-yard interception return for a touchdown. He adds the point after, and the Falcons lead 7-0 late in the first quarter. Century tries to keep pace, and it's senior running back Trey Helmick with a big pickup for a first down. But the Knights can hardly stop the Falcons' round game. And when quarterback Killen Kraut sneaks in from one yard out, Winters Mill takes a 14-0 lead as we approach halftime. The Falcons are flying on defense, too. Malachi Denning greets Helmick with a tackle for loss. Big Mill forces a century punt late in the half, and it's Crouch again, this time after a big pass to Cook, sets up this 26-yard touchdown scamper. And the Falcons lead 21-0 at the break. Winters Mill keeps it on the ground and crouches into the end zone again. Another one yard keeper and the Falcons stretch their lead to 28 0. Poulton connects on this pass to Christian Gordon, but the Knights spend most of the game behind the sticks and struggle to find any offensive rhythm. The Falcons finish things off with yet another Caleb Crouch rushing TD. This time it's from nine yards out, and Cook adds the PAT for a 35-0 Winters Mill lead. Winters Mill enjoys the running clock the rest of the way, and it's a 35-0 final score. The Falcons are 4-0 and 2-0 in the county, behind Caleb Crouch's four rushing touchdowns. Century is 0-4, 0-1 with CCAL, and the Knights host Francis Scott Key on September 29th. Meanwhile, Winters Mill welcomes Liberty next week in the second of four straight home games for the Falcons. Falcons roll to a win, and now they share the top spot in the county standings with Liberty as we finish up the month. And as you just heard, Winters Mill welcomes the Lions to town this coming Friday. Liberty got to 2-0 in the county with a road victory over Francis Scott Key, and Man Valley took care of South Carroll. The non-county matchup was a doozy, with Westminster rallying to beat Walkersville after they trailed 21-7. Speaking of Westminster, the Owls return to Ruby Field this Friday to take on Manchester Valley, and we'll have that one for you with another CM Sportsnet football game of the week. Join me and Ken and Speedy Johnson for pregame coverage at 645, followed by kickoff at 7. Man Valley bounced back after a tough week three loss against Liberty and defeated South Carroll behind two touchdowns apiece from James Herndon and Kingston Candy. The Mavericks will look to get those players going again this week against a talented Owls defense. The Mavs are scoring 20 points per game so far this season. The Owls had to rally for a win for the second time this year behind three rushing touchdowns from quarterback Kyrese Walker. Westminster trailed by 14 points in the second quarter before holding Walkersville scoreless the rest of the way. The Owls offense is averaging 35.5 points per game through four weeks. 
You can see in our team stats matchup that the Owls offense has the edge so far, but the Mavericks have collected take, uh, more takeaways through four games. Let's check in with the quarterbacks ahead of Friday's matchup between the Mavericks and the Owls. Man Valley's Gene Magan should surpass 400 passing yards after Friday's game, plus he has a rushing touchdown this year as well. Meanwhile, Westminster's Kyrie's Walker has generated more than 1,000 total yards with his legs and right arm as we enter week five. Now it's time to hear from both coaches as they get their teams ready to face off this week. First up is Manchester Valley coach Bernie Kuntz, whose Mavericks want to get to 2-1 and one in county play. Let's take a listen. Coach, uh, coming off a of victory uh, last week, uh, bounced back after the one week before that. Um, how are the guys feeling right now as you get ready for, you know, maybe the biggest test to date? You know, Perry, Perry Hall was first, but now Westminster being the next uh, opponent. Feeling good about where you are right now physically and, and mentally? Yeah, I mean, South Carroll, the South Carroll game was a good game um, as far as being a win. It's always great to have get a county win under your belt. Um, could have been a little bit cleaner, turned the ball over uh, a few too many times, had a lot of uh, good plays brought back because of penalties. So things we need to definitely clean up, you know, but again, good uh, to get a win. We're still a little banged up and trying to get healthy, uh, getting a couple kids back, but uh, things along that, because uh, as we go along, hopefully we'll get them back a little bit more as we go through. But uh, coming along, some younger kids and some other kids are stepping up, doing some good things. So, you know, uh, we're, Coming along, we're getting there, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, show have a good showing this week at Westbrook. What needs to go well for you guys to have that good showing to compete and to you know hopefully on your end come out with a victory? We definitely need to be able to uh, contain their run game and their pass game. Both, I mean, it's easy said, easier said than done. I mean, uh, Kyrie's is a good player, and he's a multifaceted player, being able to run and. Uh, spread the ball out and throw it, and they've got some good receivers that have come along. So stopping their passing game is going to be key, but also contain him and keep him in the box. Uh, offensively sustaining drives, and hopefully that will help keep the ball out of their hands of the offense. So if we can sus get some good sustained drives, minimize their time on the field, you know that would uh, go a long way to our success on Friday. Thanks to Coach Coots for spending some time with us. All right, let's move over to Westminster now and hear from Coach Chris Basler as his Owls are going after their second straight 4-1 start. Coach, I know you'd rather have your guys comfortably lead games from start to finish, but that's two now in terms of uh, comeback wins. Take that aside. How pleased were you of your guys to go on the road against Walkersville and get a huge win? Yeah, you know, I, obviously we were happy. You know, we knew they were going to be tough and physical and, uh, you know, talented and you know, especially playing at their place, um, we knew it was going to be a challenge. And they had a couple of big plays on us earlier, and we were able to make some good adjustments and, and, and match their physicality, which is, I think, I was the most pleased about. How much is that is the veterans you have on this team? You got, I know you're young in some spots, and how much is that is just the overall resilience of these guys? They know what's at stake. They know how to come back and answer the call. You know, I think we'll, we'll find that out this week, you know, is, is how far have we come um, you know, as a team. We do have a good mix of veterans and, and young guys, and, you know, we're in week four. So we've been playing four weeks, and, you know, we've played four good football teams, and we got another one waiting for us this Friday. Yeah, I was going to ask you about them. They're, they're big. They're, they got some talent as well. What needs to go well for you guys to get, a, get another victory against Manchester Valley? You know, I think we're going to have to, uh, to play our game. You know, we keep trying to focus on how we play, and, you know, we're going to have to be physical and match their size and their toughness. And, uh, you know, it's a lot like last week. It's going to be if we can execute and limit the mistakes. And if we do, it'll go our way. And if we don't, you know, it, it might not. Thanks to Coach Chris Bassler for giving us some time, spending the visit. Don't forget to tune in this Friday as we give you Manchester Valley and Westminster as the CM Sportsnet Game of the Week. Ken Johnson joins me in the booth for the broadcast, and we'll have play-by-play -play and analysis throughout the game. Our pregame cover starts at 645 and kickoff is set for 7. Let's take a look now at the rest of the Week 5 schedule for Carroll County football. Century hosts FSK as the Knights and Eagles search for their first win of the season. We have the Falcons hosting the Lions in a battle for first place in the county standings. And South Carroll welcomes Sussex Central from Georgetown, Delaware. Looks like some solid matchups this week, so check in with CM Sportsnet for scores and highlights in the coming days. When we come back, We'll see what happened when Century hosted Winners Mill in a battle for first place in the girls' soccer standings. We'll visit with the Carroll Lynx fall sports teams, and we'll check in with McDaniel College's football team in our CM Sportsnet Spotlight. So don't go away. Game On will be back in just a moment.
Hungry? Genova's to go. Pizza, pasta, subs, and more. Fresh hot pizza right from the oven. Genova's to go. A mouth-watering cheesesteak just off the grill. Genova's to go. Fresh baked bread and plump wings seconds from the fryer. Genova's to go. Genova's to go carry out delivery. Mobile device and online ordering is available at all locations. Westminster, Hampstead, Manchester, and our newest dining room in Eldersburg. For lunch, dinner, or any time in between. Genova's to go. Hey there, I'm Pat Stetzer. And I'm Michael Duffy, inviting you to join us for The Score and more. Each week we'll talk about high school sports in Carroll County. We'll share information about upcoming games, highlight coaches and athletes, and much more. We'll even try to have a little fun along the way. Don't miss The Score and More podcast, presented by CM Sportsnet. The Score and More sports podcast is available online at carrollmediacenter.org and on a variety of podcast channels. game on. Now let's take a look at a pivotal Carroll County Athletic League girls soccer match early in the season between Winters Mill and Century. Let's see the highlights from Eldersburg. The Knights welcomed the Falcons as a pair of rivals came into this one unbeaten in county play. Century senior night was a rainy one, but the team celebrated soon, uh, 14 soon-to-be graduates with a nice ceremony. Winters Mill was 4-0 overall and it scored 25 goals in those matches. Century, meanwhile, won two and tied one following a loss to Mercy two weeks ago. The Knights almost break through early, but Falcons goalie Emma Jewell comes out to make the save on this play here. We're scoreless seven minutes into the match. The home team strikes first when senior Harley Hamlet gets a nice pass from Gracie Tarangio and slides the ball, slides the ball past Jewell for a one nothing nice lead. Nice celebrate there with the early advantage. You're going to see some nice ball movement by Century late in the first half. And when Bella Cosio finds Hamlet, the forward nets another goal. Right out in front. Knights 2, Falcons 0, with under seven minutes to play in the first half. Jewel and her winner's mill defensive teammates with a great effort here late in the first half, coming off this Century corner kick. Nice play there in front of the goal. The Knights come up empty, but they lead 2-0 at the break. Tarangio almost gets a goal here in the second half, but once again, it's Jewel to make a nice diving stop for the Falcons. Nice footwork coming up from Tarangio here, and the senior gets rewarded with a laser for the goal. Good rip there from the middle of the field. Century has padded its lead. And the Knights are on their way to another county win. Final score is Century 3, Winners Mill 0. The Knights move to 2-0 in the county and 4-1-1 one one overall. And the Falcons drop to 4-1, and 2-1 one, and one in the Carroll County Athletic League. Let's see some recent scores from around the county. South Carroll blanked Westminster and kept pace with Winners Mill and Liberty in the county standings. Lions had a pair of victories, both shutouts against Carroll County foes. It's Winners Mill visiting Liberty on September 29th in another big matchup. Plus, we've got Century going to Manchester Valley next week. And the Falcons host South Carroll on October 2nd.
All right, let's shift over to boys soccer now. Liberty snapped a two-game skid with a convincing win against Francis Scott Key, but one of those losses came against Red Hot Manchester Valley. The Mavericks have won three straight and have only allowed one goal so far this season, so Man Valley off to a really, really good start here. Winners Mill gets another test when reigning county champ Liberty comes to town on September 28th. And Man Valley has road matchups with Westminster and Century as we hit October, hard to believe. Checking in with Carroll Community College now, men's soccer enjoyed a pair of victories in the last week. Daniel Wachowiak had two goals against Cecil College, and the Lynx got goals from Evan Austin and Zach Gagler against Anne Arundel Community College. Volleyball lost a pair of matches last Saturday and fell short against Frederick on Monday. But in the tri-match on Saturday, Carly Badorf had 20 combined kills in those two matchups. Men's soccer hits the road Tuesday before returning home to face College of Southern Maryland. Volleyball visits Hartford Community College on October 5th and gets Westmoreland at home the following night at the Copper Mine Pantherplex in Hampstead. Let's stay with the links now as Carroll's men's soccer team went after a second straight win and hosted Anne Arundel Community College on Tuesday. Time to take a look at the highlights. The Lynx and the Riverhawks on a rainy afternoon in Westminster. Carroll looking to even its record in league play and avenge last year's 5-3 loss to the Riverhawks. Going to see Amaris Acevedo make a nice save here early on for the Lynx. But unfortunately for Carroll, he has to leave at the match after this play here. Good stop, though, by the keeper. The Lynx appear to score first after this direct kick coming up here from Griffin Garvis. You'll see the kick go in on goal. Nathan Burnley gets, uh, nets the shot off the rebound, but he's called for being offside, and the goal does not count. Anthony Wallace tries to beat Ann Reynolds' keeper to the ball after this long serve, but Jaim Blake slides in to make the stop at the top of the box. Still scoreless between Anne Arundel and Carroll. Zach Gagler takes a rip here from about 30 to 35 yards away that just sails over the crossbar or else Carroll would have had the lead late in the first half. Into the second half, the Lynx break through in the 72nd minute thanks to this shot from Evan Austin coming up right here. Carroll's gonna take the one nothing lead on that blast there from Austin. Lynx can celebrate their first goal of the game. A few minutes later, it's Gagner with a nice move to clear some space. He's going to tuck a shot just into the corner of the net, and that's a big goal because that gives Carroll a 2-0 advantage. Ten and a half minutes to play in the game. Some more celebration there for the home team. Now things get a little heated in the final minutes between these two rivals, and officials decide to end it with 4-13 remaining. So Carroll gets the 2-0 win and improves to 3-5 overall, 3-3 three three in the Maryland JUCO Conference. Got a little chippy there at the end of the match, but they halted it early. Like I said, Carroll got the win. The Lynx have already reached last year's win total through eight games after Tuesday's victory, so things are looking up for Carroll under new coach Joe Pratt. All right, we've got a CM Sportsnet spotlight, spotlight for you this week, and it comes from McDaniel College. We made a trip to campus during the football bye week to visit with their new coach and find out how the Green Terror are faring in 2023. Let's take a look. McDaniel College's football team went into transition mode back in June when head coach Demarcus White left his post after three seasons and offensive line coach David Sarton assumed the interim head coach position. The Green Terror didn't have a lot of time to get adjusted to the new front man, but Sarton took over having a quarter century worth of college football coaching experience. Part of that run, including being part of national championships at Grand Valley State and Mount Union. Now Sarton is leading the Green Tear into battle each week. McDaniel is 0-3 to start the 2023 season, but their new coach said he's proud of how the players and staff have handled the change at the top. Uh, they've been probably every emotion that you can imagine, excited, nervous, antsy, you know, can I do this, what will happen? And the best thing that happened was we got to camp because then it kind of came a little bit second nature, you kind of knew what knew what to expect. What we accomplished in two months should really take six. I mean, we got an all-star cat, all-star staff here. 
you know, nine coaches now. We got graduate assistants. I mean, we just got a lot done in two months with the help of everybody on this campus. Uh, I would say it's been like really like good. Like we we all it's all like one of this team. We've been working hard, and you know it's been it's been a tough little weeks that we've been going through, but we still gonna bounce back. We we work hard at practice every day, so every time we work off like work hard, it pays off. And Kosarin he's been doing an amazing job since he's been here. So yeah. The Centennial Conference had its bye week after week three, so the Terror get two weeks to get ready for Gettysburg on September 30th. Leading the way on offense is grad student and running back Trent Gaskins, who averages more than five yards per carry and has close to 100 receiving yards so far. Senior Jevin Tranquillo leads the team on defense with 22 tackles and three sacks, and the squad has six takeaways as a whole. But McDaniel is allowing 39 points per game, something that doesn't bode well with opponents such as Muhlenberg and Dickinson coming up in the next few weeks. Gaskin said the team's unity can go a long way toward the Green Terror getting back on track. I think all the strengths that we have is like we like we're able to fight. Like we're able to fight every quarter. We're not giving up no matter what. Um, even all the positions that we have is loaded with like a lot of talent in there. So we have a lot of talent at every position and everybody contributes as one. So we just stay together and keep the course and we, we definitely can come out with the win. Sarton played his college football at Story Mount Union and was part of two national titles as a member of the Purple Raiders. As a coach, he has helped four different schools make a combined six NCAA playoff appearances. He brings energy to McDaniel's sideline, and a longtime coach said that's not going to change with the Green Terror looking to turn things around in a hurry. Oh, absolutely, because we're all about celebrating the positives. And really, when you look at football, good teams, you know, they kind of carry each other when they have to. We had a bad fumble against Rowan, and the defense went out and got an awesome three and out. You know, we got, you know, a great turnover by the defense, and the offense went back and scored. And sometimes when you're rebuilding, getting these kids to understand that there are positives outside of the scoreboard. Um, every Sunday, we like to list the things that we're going to celebrate from the game. And I mean, in the past three weeks, we've had 20, 25 different positives that maybe the scoreboard doesn't doesn't reflect. McDaniel hosts Gettysburg on September 30th for homecoming with a 1 p.m. kickoff. The Terra beat the Bullets 19 to 16 last season at home. It's time for the latest CM Sportsnet Athlete of the Week. We go to Westminster where this player helped the Owls come from behind to beat Walkersville and get to 3-1 on the football season. Time to find out who it is. Let's take a look. This week's CM Sportsnet Athlete of the Week, Clayton Dorsey, Westminster football. Clayton was dominant on both sides of the ball, helped the Owls beat Walkersville. Clayton, it was a crazy game. The second time you've had a comeback like that, what was it like to go on the road and get that win against a really good Walkersville team? Yeah, no, Walkersville was definitely a good team. It was a good environment. Uh, you know, it's good to come back, but it's also not good to come back all the time. So, you know, we uh, didn't play our game the first half, and then the second half we came out firing all cylinders. So it was nice to come back and get the win. 12 tackles, I think it's two or three for loss, 100 yards plus, and a, a touchdown. You had another huge big week before, week before against South Carroll. Which side of the ball are you more working on right now to try to become a better, more raw, you know, more balanced player, the defensive side or the offensive side? Uh, I mean, I'll work on both all the time, but um, I mean, I feel like I had to step up in a role on offense with uh, Fisher gone. But, um, I mean, defense, I missed the first couple games because I was hurt. So it feels good to be back out there. But, yeah, I would say I would probably have to step in a bigger role on offense just because Fisher is so good. But. Yeah, it's hard to uh, fill those shoes. You were on this team last year. That through the first four weeks was a lot of challenges, and you guys came out pretty pretty well. You're 3-1 and one now after the first four weeks of this year. Difference between last year's team and this year's team? You just mentioned you lost a good player in Mason Fisher and other guys graduated too. There's a good core guys back there from last year. You're one of those guys. What's the mood like on this year's team as you guys get ready to shift into full, you know, county mode the rest of the way and you look to go far in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing as last year. I mean, I think we lost week three last year to South Carroll too. So, um, I mean, it, it's tough losing a game where you feel like you probably should have won, but it is what it is. We just got, got to fight back, and we took care of business against South Carolina and Walkersville, so we just have to keep doing that against the other county teams. All right, congrats on a great week. Clayton Dorsey, this week's CM Sportsnet Athlete of the Week. CM Sportsnet's Athlete of the Week is brought to you in part by Barnes Bollinger Insurance Services and by Genova's To Go. Congrats to Clayton Dorsey, our latest CM Sportsnet Athlete of the Week, and we're set to see him in action again this week. 
Don't forget, we've got a football game of the week coming to you this Friday as Westminster hosts Manchester Valley in a big county clash. Our pregame coverage begins at 645 with Ken Johnson joining me for Ruby Field and kickoff is set for 7 p.m. That's going to do it for Game On this week. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to follow all of CM Sportsnet's content on Facebook and YouTube, as well as on cable channel HD 1086. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.